In the last lecture, we considered the effect of uh, chemical reaction on mass transfer uh, and uh, uh, considering that we are approaching the subject from the standpoint of physical mass transfer in which case there is no, no chemical reaction at all. It is logical that we start the uh, consideration of chemical reactions uh, from the uh, slowest of them and then as we go along we consider reactions which are of increasing severity that is faster and faster. So, we started our consideration by considering uh, the slow reactions and uh, um, we started this consideration within the framework of film theory. Now, you do not have to be unduly perturbed at this stage that we are using film theory which uh, in the earlier lecture we said is less realistic than the surface renewal theories. As we go along, uh, I hope to make it clear to you that uh, film theory does have a legitimate place in the uh, scheme of things when it comes to predicting the effect of chemical reaction on mass transfer. So, for the moment we will uh, accept the film theory treatment and proceed. So, we set out the uh, film theory equations and um, uh, we uh, invoked a chemical reaction which has the essential characteristics that we are looking for. Um, in other words, it has a dependence on the, uh, the rate of the reaction has a dependence on the concentration of A, it has a dependence on the concentration of B. Uh, but in order to keep uh, matter simple, we considered a first order dependence which is about the simplest that you can think of. And uh, so, uh, such a reaction uh, that is uh, A in the gas phase reacting with B which is a component of the liquid phase, the stoichiometry being small uh, nu uh, moles of B being uh, consumed for every mole of A to give a product that remains in the liquid phase. So, this is the kind of reaction that we are considering. And uh, in order to facilitate analysis, we decided to approach the equations from a non-dimensional perspective and uh, we chose a scheme of non-dimensionalization which was such that the non-dimensionalized uh, variables vary within the range of 0 to 1 and therefore, they are of comparable magnitude. So, when we did this, it uh, immediately became clear to us that when we talk about uh, slow reactions and fast reactions and so on, we are not talking about the velocity of reaction in any absolute sense. We are always talking about the velocity of uh, reaction as it relates to the uh, velocity of uh, diffusion. So, we defined this dimensionless group which we called m which had this form. and which is therefore, the ratio of the uh, uh, diffusion time scale to the reaction time scale. So, uh, values of uh, uh, m which are very small would be identified as belonging to slow reactions, values of, of m which are large would be, uh, would be taken to signify fast reactions. So, uh, using this uh, uh, non-dimensional group, um, we um, wrote the reactions uh, in non-dimensional form and uh, when we non-dimensionalized the equation for the concentration of B, another dimensionless group arose which had this form and this we called as the relative abundance. and uh, this we can call as the diffusion reaction parameter and uh, it turns out to have a special name in the literature. The square root of m is called as the Hutta number. So, m would be called as square of the Hutta number. So, um, with these two dimensionless groups, we were able to write down the uh, differential equations and the boundary conditions and then we considered to start with uh, those reactions for which we do not have to worry about the uh, dependence of the reaction rate on B. These happen to be those reactions where the concentration of B is so large that the reaction is not able to make a significant dent into the concentration. Um, so, in other words the rate at which B is being supplied to the uh, uh, into the film is so much larger than the rate at which it is required uh, than the amount uh, at which it is required that uh, the concentration of B remains virtually uniform right up to the uh, gas liquid interface. So, in quantitative terms this happens when M 
has a value that is much smaller than q. And we made the point that q is usually of the order of 10 to the power uh, 2 or more. There are systems for which q could be smaller, but uh, it is usual to find q to be of this order of magnitude and therefore, it is not unrealistic to imagine situations in which m is much less than q. So, under these conditions the concentration profile of B is something that is flat that is uh, uh, that does not have to be bothered with and therefore, these qualify to be called as pseudo first order pseudo first order cases. So, this is the first thing that we started considering the pseudo first order case and within that we made a further assumption that the value of m is not only much less than q, it is much less than 1. So, these we can now call as belonging to the slow reaction regime and when this happens the reaction is so slow that its occurrence within the film can be completely neglected. The transport process uh, within the film takes place just as if the reaction were not there. So, the transport process delivers a certain flux of uh, A into the bulk of the uh, liquid and that is where the reaction exerts its influence. So, in order to see the effect of uh, uh, reaction, it is pointless to look at the diffusion film itself because there the concentration profile remains linear as in the case of physical mass transfer. It is more useful to look at the bulk of the uh, liquid that is the region of the liquid that is outside the film. So, we made the point that this region is about 1000 times as large as the uh, uh, liquid as the volume of liquid that is contained within the film itself and therefore, even a small amount of reaction that takes place in this large volume is able to result in a significant consumption of A. So, this is a point that uh, uh, becomes relevant when we consider the what is called as the diffusional sub regime, but uh, so, uh, proceeding on this basis we made a balance for A in the liquid bulk uh, which we consider to be in a kind of quasi steady state. In other words any changes in concentration etcetera that are taking place in the bulk are taking place at such a slow rate the mass transfer process can be uh, considered to be quasi steady. Under these circumstances we can simply equate the flux of A that comes into the uh, liquid bulk uh, with the uh, amount that is reacted uh, within the bulk uh, by the chemical reaction which we take to be second order. So, when we did this it turns out that the concentration of A within the bulk is set by the relative severity of the reaction relative to the mass transfer process and we defined another parameter p which was simply the reaction rate constant divided by the mass transfer rate constant if you like. So, this turns out to be equal to the ratio of m to this parameter a hat delta which is the ratio of the film volume to the bulk volume. So, in terms of p uh, we can classify these slow reactions into those reactions which are very very slow for which m is so small that uh, uh, in spite of being divided by uh, a much smaller number uh, a, a, um, a very small number such as a hat delta which has the order of magnitude of 10 to the power minus 3 as we have uh, uh, demonstrated. In spite of being divided by such a small number p still remains very very small. That means, that the rate of reaction is much smaller than the uh, uh, rate of mass transfer, the mass transfer is able to pump uh, um, the gas into the bulk uh, till the bulk virtually becomes saturated. So, this leads to the concentration in the bulk being approximately equal to the saturation concentration or in non dimensional terms the uh, uh, a b is equal to 1, the non dimensional concentration of bulk uh, concentration in the bulk of a is equal to 1 and this we called as the kinetic sub regime kinetic sub regime. On the other hand 
it is possible given the small value of uh, a hat delta that even for reasonably larger values of m the value of p can remain much uh, greater than 1. In other words, we are saying that uh, the, uh, uh, the, the multiplication by 10 to the power 3 uh, in the numerator uh, makes it possible for p to remain uh, greater than 1 even if m is uh, considerably small. So, this under these conditions what we are saying is that the reaction is much faster than the process of mass transfer here and therefore, a b tends to 0 negligible values and the reaction takes place in the bulk at uh, very very small values of the concentration. So, this condition uh, qualifies to be called as the diffusional sub regime. In the kinetic sub regime, the rate of absorption would be given by the kinetic rate k c b b c a star. In the diffusional sub regime, the rate can be calculated as the mass transfer rate k l a c a star. So, these are the points that we made. It is important to realize the significance of the diffusional sub regime. It arises only because of the fact that the ratio of liquid in the film uh, to the uh, ratio of uh, to the volume of liquid in the bulk is very very small the bulk is about 1000 times larger than the film that is the only circumstance that leads to the occurrence of the diffusional sub regime and in the diffusional sub regime although we are saying that the um, uh, concentration of a in the bulk is very very small that is not to say that there is uh, uh, no, no reaction occurring in the bulk because if you simply substitute this a b equal to 0 in the kinetic rate expression uh, uh, you will come up to the conclusion come up with the conclusion that the uh, rate of uh, reaction is first order in a there is no a in the bulk therefore there is no reaction in the bulk that is not the case because we are saying that a b tends to 0 that is it has a, a value that is very very small may be 10 percent may be 5 percent may be 1 percent of saturation uh, but this small concentration of uh, uh, a is sufficient to cause a, a reasonable amount of A to be consumed in the bulk because the volume of liquid in the bulk is so large. So, the significance of the diffusional uh, sub regime is a little difficult to grasp at uh, first, but it uh, deserves attention because it is an important regime one which allows a calculation of certain mass transfer characteristics. Uh, before proceeding further to faster reactions, let us uh, try to fix these concepts by taking an example. So, this is the example that we wish to consider. Uh, it is required to determine the value of uh, the volumetric mass transfer coefficient or k l a for a batch absorber using the reaction uh, a in the gas phase reacting with 2 of b in the liquid phase giving c which remains in the liquid phase. So, this reaction is first order in a which means to say that it has no dependence on the concentration of b. K L and A are expected to be of this order. So, we have a rough idea of the order of magnitude values of K L and A. K L is expected to be about 10 to the power minus 4 meters per second uh, in SI units and uh, A hat that is the interfacial area per unit volume of liquid uh, is uh, 200 square meters per meter cubed. Now, the diffusivity of A in the liquid is given to be 2.5 into 10 raise to minus 9 uh, square meters per second. So, this is exactly known these are just order of magnitude estimates. Uh, a choice of uh, liquid phase reactants is available with different rate constants and uh, you have to determine what value of k will suit the purpose that is the purpose being the calculation of or the estimation of uh, the volumetric mass transfer coefficient k l a. So, in order to estimate KLA, how do we approach this problem? We need, we need, uh, so let us start solving this problem. So, in order to estimate uh, KLA, we need the slow reaction regime, first of all. We may be able to estimate KLA and other uh, under other circumstances as we go along, 
but from so whatever we know so far it is possible to estimate KLA under the slow reaction regime. And uh, this means first of all that we need a value of uh, m that is much less than 1. Additionally, in the slow reaction regime if uh, uh, the value of p is very very small and the liquid becomes saturated then the mass transfer has no role to play the uh, absorption rate is completely controlled by the kinetics. So, we do not want that kind of a situation. So, ideally we would also need p to be much greater than 1 that is the diffusional sub regime or at least we need p greater than 1. So, that uh, the mass transfer has some significant role to play. So, this is the best situation where the rate of absorption if you measure is completely the rate of mass transfer and uh, it is possible to uniquely calculate the rate of mass transfer. So, let us write down some expressions and let us calculate some numbers. Uh, first of all, we would like to estimate this delta the film thickness which is d a divided by k l and this is 2.5 into 10 raise to minus 9 divided by we do not have an exact value for k l. In fact, the objective of the entire exercise to is to calculate k l a. Therefore, we can only calculate approximate values for these quantities and uh, k l we have been told has a value of 1 into 10 raise to minus 4 meters per second. So, this gives you a value of 2.5 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 5 meters. So, given that A has a value of uh, about 200, we can calculate the ratio of the film volume to the bulk volume. Um, and this turns out to be 5 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 that is 0.5 percent of the liquid uh, that is present in the entire tank is what resides in the film. So, what is the value of m? So, this is this is sufficiently small we need to confirm this because if this was large then uh, we should suspect that there is no diffusional sub regime. So, we will not be able to estimate uh, uh, very accurately the value of k l a if this were uh, uh, to be a small number. In other words, if a hat delta were to be a small number then the purpose would be defeated. So, here we are all right because 5 into 10 raise to minus 3 is sufficiently small and uh, we suspect that uh, there are uh, reactions for which a diffusional, diffusional sub regime is a very real possibility. Uh, so, what are those kinds of reactions? Those are reactions for which m is much less than 1 and p is much greater than 1. So, these are the kinds of reactions that we want and m we can estimate once again is delta squared. In this case the first order rate constant is itself given. So, that is k c b b is replaced by the first order rate constant um, k 1 divided by d a and uh, so this is delta square is 2.5 square multiplied by 10 to the power minus 10 k 1 which is unknown. So, remember that these are, these are again estimates divided by 2.5 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 9. Okay. So, the 2.5 cancels and uh, so we are left with uh, a 10 to the power minus 1 from here. So, that is 0 0.25 k 1 is the value of m. So, the value of k 1 for example, uh, if it has a value like 1 uh, or 2 then m is 0 0.25 or 0 0.5 which is still uh, much less than 1. What is p? p is nothing but k 1 or we can say m divided by a hat delta since we have calculated both of these quantities and m is 0 0.25 k 1 divided by a hat delta was 5 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3. 
So, this gives you 50 k 1. So, with, with uh, these two numbers here, we have to choose a value of k 1 which keeps this small, but keeps this large. So, if you choose too small a value of k 1, you will achieve this one, but uh, you may not achieve that one. On the other hand, if you choose too large a value of k 1, you will certainly achieve this one, but this might be compromised. So, we can try out a value of uh, k such as a value of k which is like 0.2 second inverse gives m of 0 0.05 and p of 10. Now, this is small enough, uh, is this large enough that is the question. So, we can establish that by looking at the expression for the rate of mass transfer in the slow reaction regime in general. So, this is the general expression without assuming that the reaction is in the diffusional or the kinetic sub regime. So, this if you recall from yesterday's lecture is K L A C A star multiplied by P by P plus 1. Now, this factor P by P plus 1 is like 10 divided by 11 into K L A C A star. So, this is this is a factor that is close enough to 1. So, R A is approximately equal to K L A C star and therefore, this is ok. So, we can get a reasonable estimate of uh, uh, K L A C A star. If you have uh, a reactant B for which the value of rate constant is 0 0.2 second inverse. So, what this uh, simple example shows is that the uh, equations of uh, 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 slow reaction regime uh, are useful in characterizing mass transfer equipment with respect to K L A if uh, reactions of uh, uh, you know sufficiently uh, slow uh, rate constants are available. On the other hand, you can uh, uh, I mean sufficiently slow in the sense of uh, uh, it should be slow from the point of view of uh, uh, m, it should be fast from the point of view of p. So, we have already established those conditions. So, uh, the appropriate kind of reactions can be found and this is often possible. For example, if you take the example of uh, absorption of carbon dioxide into a solution of amines, a choice of amines is available. You can uh, choose monoethanolamine, you can choose diethanolamine, you can use uh, uh, triethanolamine and all of these have different rates of reaction uh, or for that matter the, you can choose any of a range of hindered amines for which uh, again the rate constants are. Uh, so, it is always possible in a practical situation to find an appropriate reactant with the right rate characteristics that uh, the mass transfer uh, uh, behavior of the vessel in terms of its volumetric mass transfer coefficient K L A can be completely characterized. On the other hand, you can choose a reaction that is uh, very, very slow and use the measured absorption rate to accurately calculate the value of the rate constant itself. Uh, so, this is a situation that is not unlike homogeneous reactions. If the reaction is very, very slow, uh, that is to say m is much less than 1 and also p is much less than 1. Under those conditions, you are in the kinetic sub regime the reaction rate is given by uh, the absorption rate is given by the reaction rate expression with the maximum values of the concentration of B and the concentration of A substituted both of which are uh, known to start with and in a batch process you can conduct batch runs and interpret them as you would interpret a homogeneous reaction and, and uh, work out all the characteristics of the uh, reaction rate expression. So, these are two things that can be done using uh, these uh, expressions from an experimental point of view, from the point of view of a fundamental uh, study of reaction and uh, mass transfer parameters. On the other uh, side, if you want to design a reactor uh, and uh, uh, the mass transfer behavior of that uh, uh, kind of reactor has been characterized uh, earlier, you have an idea of what the KLA is and the reaction is uh, been well studied. So, you know what the uh, rate behavior is then you can work out these numbers and determine whether the reaction is in the slow reaction regime and if it is in the slow reaction regime, you can choose an appropriate rate expression of this type of uh, this type here and uh, uh, use that 
to uh, design the reactor. So, uh, we have uh, what we have said is that uh, we have sufficiently understood the slow reaction regime uh, uh, in the sense that we can now use our understanding to number one interpret the uh, rate parameters whether it is KLA or whether it is the reaction rate constant. And on the other hand, we can also use our understanding through to design uh, reactors for situations where the reaction happens to be in the slow reaction regime. So, let us proceed further on that basis and now we will consider faster reactions. faster reactions. I put uh, faster within inverted commas, we will uh, give more descriptive names to the kind of regimes that uh, we are considering as we go along, but this is faster in the sense that now we are considering values of m which are not necessarily uh, uh, much smaller than 1, they are about 1 or more, but it remains a fact that m is far less than q. So, the pseudo first order uh, assumption is still valid. So, we recall this equation that we wrote yesterday. And because we have a pseudo first order regime, we do not have to consider b. So, we have got a uh, what for all practical purposes is a first order reaction in non dimensional terms and um, the boundary conditions are a is equal to 1 at zeta equal to 0 and a equals a b at zeta equal to 1. A brief comment about this boundary condition here for all practical purposes When we, ha when we write this uh, non-zero term on the right hand side, the reaction is already fast enough that A B is nearly 0. That is because even when this was 0, even when the value of m was uh, so small that we did not have to consider it on the right hand side of this equation, we uh, uh, if we um, vary the uh, value of uh, the reaction rate constant, we come to the diffusional sub regime where already a b is tending to 0. So, even under those circumstances m is much smaller than 1. Uh, therefore, when, you, when we come to 1, we are already past the situation where uh, the reaction needs to be fast enough to keep the concentration of uh, a in the bulk at 0. Therefore, a b can usually be replaced by 0, but for the moment we will uh, solve it for general values of a b and we will invoke this assumption at the appropriate time. So, if we look at this uh, equation, it is a sufficiently innocent looking ordinary differential equation of the first order and uh, you know that these kinds of equations have solutions of the form e to the power p zeta. Uh, zeta. Uh, and the value of p what are called as the eigenvalues are obtained by substituting this in this equation and deriving what is called as a characteristic equation. So, for this case if you uh, substitute here you will get a p squared e to the power p zeta here m times e to the power p zeta here and cancelling out e to the power p zeta from both sides we get the characteristic equation as follows. Is uh, p squared equals m and which means p can take two values plus or minus square root of m. Therefore, the general solution invoking the principle of superposition for linear systems can be written as a equals c 1 1 integration constant e to the power root m zeta plus c 2 a second integration constant e to the power minus root m zeta. So, we need to calculate the values of these two constants c 1 and c 2 by invoking the boundary conditions and if we invoke the first boundary condition which says that at zeta equal to 0 a has a value of 1 
we have 1 equals c 1 plus zeta c 2 zeta equal to 0 makes this term 1 zeta equal to 0 makes that term 1 as well. And if you invoke, so this means that uh, one of the constants can be represented in terms of the other. And if we invoke the second boundary condition, we have a b as equal to c 1 e to the power root m plus c 2 e to the power minus root m. So, we can substitute this into this and find out a value of c 2 and resubstitute back the in that and find out a value of c 1 and I will leave it to you to uh, do those algebraic manipulations and give you the final equations for the two constants. C 1 is that and C 2 is e to the power root m minus a b divided by e to the power root m minus e to the power minus root m. You will recall uh, the definition of hyperbolic uh, uh, trigonometric functions uh, and uh, uh, realize that these quantities can be written in terms of hyperbolic signs, but uh, we will do that in a minute. If we substitute these values of c 1 and c 2 into this expression here, we get the final expression for the concentration of A, which is A b e to the power square root of m zeta minus e to the power minus square root of m zeta plus e to the power root m 1 minus zeta minus e to the power minus root m 1 minus zeta. divided by e to the power root m minus e to the power minus root m. So, as I mentioned a moment ago, writing in terms of the hyperbolic uh, sines and cosines and so on, this can be written as 1 by sin h root m a b sin h root m zeta plus sin h root m 1 minus zeta. So, this is the uh, concentration profile and what we are interested is of course, the absorption flux. and this is nothing but minus d a d c a d x at x equal to 0 or in terms of the dimensionless uh, numbers that we are working with it is d a c a star divided by delta d a divided by d zeta evaluated at zeta equal to 0 which means we have to differentiate this with respect to zeta and evaluate the derivative at zeta equal to 0 substitute into this in order to get the absorption flux. So, d a by d zeta if you differentiate it is clearly a b root m cosh root m zeta minus root m cosh root m 1 minus zeta divided by sin h of root m. So, this uh, at uh, if I want to evaluate this at 0 evaluate that as 0 then this gives me a b root m because cosh of 0 is 1 minus root m 
cos of root m divided by sin h of root m. So, if you substitute this in the expression for n a, we get the following expression d a c a star divided by delta root m divided by tan h root m 1 minus a b divided by cos root m. This equation makes an important point. What it says is that N A under these circumstances is not linear in the concentration driving force C A star minus C A B, because you know uh, it, it should have been 1 minus A B uh, to give you a linear driving force. Because of the presence of this cos root m here, it is not simply the C A star minus C B that uh, drives the absorption flux under these conditions. However, so this makes it uh, a, a little difficult to compare this with the physical mass transfer uh, situation, where the driving force is given by C star minus C A B. However, the saving grace uh, is uh, because of the small value of A hat delta, because of which we recall that A B usually is of the order of 0, um, by the time we start to use expressions of this kind. And therefore, if A B is equal to 0, then we get N A as D A C A star divided by delta into root m divided by tan h root m. Recalling that D A divided by delta is nothing but the mass transfer coefficient, then we have we can write this expression in the following manner, which shows that the physical mass transfer rate which was k l times c a star is now modified by this factor root m by tan h root m. Now, if you look at the values of uh, tan h root m, it turns out that uh, tan h root m is usually less than root m. Therefore, this factor has a magnitude more than 1 and tan h root m becomes 1 once root m exceeds values of uh, 3 and so on. So, this is usually a factor that is more than 1. So, what we are saying is the absorption flux is more than the physical absorption flux by this factor and we call this factor as the enhancement factor. And the definition uh, and the expression for the enhancement factor is this and this is the mass transfer rate with reaction divided by mass transfer rate without reaction. So, here we consider the mass transfer rate without reaction under the maximum driving force which is C A star that is when the bulk concentration is 0. So, this is an important expression that is the take home expression from this part of the lecture. So, let us try to gain a uh, bit more of physical understanding into what is going on by looking at um, how, how these profiles look. We have derived this expression for the concentration profile of A and uh, so what is the nature of those profiles and uh, what can we learn by understanding the nature of these profiles. So, if you plot those profiles for different values of uh, uh, root m, that is we are plotting the concentration of A as a function of zeta and this is zeta equal to 1 and that is the film region that we are talking about. Right? And let us, uh, um, let us not worry too much about situations where A B is not equal to 0. Let us assume that A B is approximately equal to 0, if it is not 0, if it is nearly equal to 0. So, this is the physical 
mass transfer profile, linear profile and this is also true of slow reaction regime. When the values of root m were so small that you did not have to consider uh, the rate expression at all in the diffusion equation. Now, the, uh, the kind of expression that we have for the concentration profile that is this expression if you plotted this then it has a slight curvature here slight concavity and the larger the value of uh, root m the larger the value of this concavity. Okay. So, this is root m increasing. Okay. Now, what does this mean? The flux at any point recall is uh, proportional to the gradient, right? that is fixed law. So, if the profile is linear, what we are saying is the gradient at every point is the same. Therefore, the flux at this point is equal to the flux at this point. In other words, as much of A is entering the gas liquid interface as is uh, uh, entering from the film into the bulk. What happens to this in the bulk? It, it is reacted and although as we have already said A B is nearly equal to 0, it is not exactly equal to 0 and because of the large volume of liquid that resides in the bulk, even if the concentration of A B is very, very small, it uh, accounts for a significant amount of reaction which in fact consumes all of this flux. So, that is the situation for slow reaction regime. Now, under these circumstances what we are saying is that the flux here is proportional to that gradient which is higher in absolute magnitude as compared to the flux at that point. So, the tangent at that point is steeper than the tangent at this point which means more is entering at the gas liquid interface than is able to leave and this difference is being accounted for by the amount that reacts within the film itself. So, as root m increases this difference increases root m uh, uh, increases leading to more of a difference between the flux there and the flux here. So, more and more of the gas that is absorbed at the gas liquid interface is now by being consumed within the film itself. Okay. So, a logical end point to this uh, sequence of profiles occurs when you come up with a profile that looks something like this. Let us use a different color in order to illustrate this point. So, ultimately you will you will come up with uh, a situation where the concentration profile is such that this gradient d a by d zeta is, is equal to 0. So, what is the implication of this? When root m is high enough for this to happen, then virtually all of the flux that is entering the gas liquid interface is being consumed within the film itself because d a by d zeta is 0 at the end of the film nothing is able to uh, go into the uh, bulk. So, the bulk liquid which is recall that it is about 1000 times in volume as compared to this is sitting there doing nothing because no a is, uh, is able to reach to the bulk at all. All the a that is absorbed is consumed within this. So, naturally this kind of a reaction qualifies to be called as a fast reaction. So, fast reaction is this situation here okay, when the profile is so concave that uh, its gradient at the um, gas at the end of the film is equal to 0. The concentration profiles in fast reaction will therefore, look something like this if you trace them for uh, increasing values of root m. So, we are looking at fast reaction and this is the end of the film zeta equal to 1 and this is zeta that is a. So, the in general the profile is going to a 0 gradient somewhere within the film at just the start of the fast reaction regime this happens at zeta equal to 1 for larger and larger values of the Hutta number we would expect the profiles to recede further and further into the film. 
So, this is the direction in which the Hatta number will increase. So, in other words the entire flux of A that is entering into the liquid is being consumed more and more within the film as the values of the Hatta number increase. Now, clearly our formulation of the problem for the uh, pseudo first order case which included uh, the uh, first order reaction term on the right hand side if you recall uh, does not make any assumption about the concentration gradient being uh, finished within the film or otherwise. Therefore, this particular case of the fast reaction is embedded within our formulation. So, our formulation must be able to predict this condition that we are discussing. So, if you go back to the, the uh, situation that we had considered earlier, this is the concentration gradient that we had defined earlier which is d a by d zeta the non dimensional concentration gradient of a within the film being given by this kind of an expression. Using this we can calculate the fraction of the solute that is being absorbed that actually reacts within the film in the following manner. So, this is the fraction of absorbed solute. that reacts within the film is given by recalling that the, the flux is always proportional to the negative of the concentration gradient. We have minus d a by d zeta evaluated at 0. This is the flux into the uh, film this is what it is proportional to minus minus d a upon d zeta evaluated at zeta equal to 1. This is the flux that is entering the uh, bulk. So, this difference is what is getting consumed within the film itself and that divided by the flux that is entering. So, this is clearly the fraction of the absorbed solute that reacts within the film. So, if you calculate these gradients from that expression over here and then evaluate this expression, it turns out to be cosh of root m minus 1 divided by cosh of root m. Now, this is uh, this expression here, this cosh of root m minus 1 divided by cosh of root m is plotted as a function of the Hatta number in this figure here, where we see that as Hatta number varies um, from 1 onwards to higher and higher values, the fraction increases continuously and in particular if you look at the fraction that is absorbed um, for Hatta number values more than uh, 3 that is root m more than 3 at root 3 uh, at root m equal to 3 it is already something like 90 percent. So, beyond that upwards of 90 percent of the reaction completely occurs within the film. So, this is a situation that we can call as fast reaction. So, in other words uh, we identify the situation where virtually all of the reaction that is 90 plus percent of the reaction is occurring within the uh, diffusion film uh, is the um, situation of fast reaction if you substitute at root m values of greater than 3 into this expression that we had the general expression that we had square root of m divided by tan h of root m. Then it turns out that the tan h of root m tends to 1 and therefore, E is approximately equal to root m. So, we can associate this expression for the enhancement factor with the fast reaction regime. Now, it is possible to approach the fast reaction regime from another viewpoint and that is by making use of the definition directly in the formulation of the problem. So, recall that we defined the fast reaction regime uh, as the situation in which 
the reaction is complete within the film and therefore, we can write the uh, governing equation. So, this is what we may call as approach 2 to the case of fast reaction. So, from the definition we can write the following equation. It is the same equation that is being solved, but it is now being uh, solved in a situation where the first uh, boundary condition is the same as before at zeta equal to 0 we have a equal to 1, but the second boundary condition we can now replace by the following condition we can say that zeta tends to infinity a equal to 0 or equivalently if it helps us we can use d a by d zeta equal to 0. So, what we are saying is that uh, this is a situation in which because the solute does not get to penetrate uh, anywhere near the uh, end of the film, the diffusing solute really does not know where the end of the film is. It could as well be at infinity as far as the diffusing solute is concerned. So, much well, uh, uh, within the film, the concentration as well as the flux go to 0 in this regime. So, if we solve this uh, equation with the boundary conditions, it is of course, the same equation that we are solving the same um, solution applies the exponential form of the solution applies and so on and uh, we have the uh, solution being given by uh, a equal to in terms of the two integration constants we have c 1 e to the power root m zeta plus c 2 e to the power minus root m zeta applying the zeta tending to infinity condition, we can say uh, we come up with the value of the first integration constant that is c 1 equal to 0, because what we are saying is that as zeta tends to infinity this term anyway goes to 0, but if this term is not to blow up then this constant has to be equal to 0. And this conclusion can also be arrived at by saying that d a by d zeta is uh, uh, 0 at uh, zeta as zeta tends to infinity, because from the concentration profile differentiating this we have this equation for the concentration gradient. And the conclusion, if you apply uh, the condition that at zeta tends to infinity, uh, d a by d zeta goes to 0 would be no different from the case of uh, saying that a goes to 0 under the, at the same point in the boundary um, uh, in the uh, film. So, either way we end up with this. Um, after applying this boundary condition and if we apply the further boundary condition at, at zeta equal to 0, which says that a is equal to 1. Therefore, we come up with a equal to e to the power minus root m zeta as the solution to this equation with this pair of boundary conditions this time. So, with the this will give you um, that the negative of the gradient which determines the flux is root m and if you substitute this in the expression for the enhancement factor this turns out to be exactly equal to the enhancement factor. So, we arrive at the same conclusion one way or the other the first approach was to uh, not make any assumption about the uh, where the gradient of the uh, concentration profile is going to 0, solve the equations in a general manner for the film theory and look at the limit where uh, the fraction of the solute that is actually being consumed within the film goes to nearly 1. So, that situation leads to uh, E equal to root m. We can alternatively formulate the problem itself in a manner that uh, ensures this that is we say that the uh, gradient as well as the concentration of A go to 0 within the film and that also gives you the same result. 
So, the net result of this is that uh, um, the uh, formulation of the problem now does not have a delta in it that is the second approach that we took. The formulation of the problem is completely independent of the film thickness and the film thickness is what comes from the film theory. So, we suspect that the film theory kind of loses its significance of uh, um, you know saying that we have a steady state process within operating within a, a finite field 0 to delta and that the uh, extent of this field that is the magnitude of delta is determined by the hydrodynamic conditions in the bulk. In other words, the larger the intensity, the smaller the delta and so on. So, these things somewhat lose their uh, significance because if it is the value of delta that is being determined by the extent of turbulence or the hydrodynamic condition and the value of delta is uh, uh, does not figure at all in the formulation of your problem. We suspect that uh, we uh, get a situation here in which the absorption rate is independent of delta or equivalently the mass transfer coefficient. So, this conclusion uh, is rather far reaching it has some uh, important conclusions which allow us to characterize uh, the mass transfer contacting equipment in certain ways uh, using the fast reaction regime and this is not possible in other regimes of absorption and we will look at that in the next lecture.